Hey everybody, I thought I would make a video here tonight. Uh, I'm going to stay on the same subject as ancient America and talk about some ancient mound sites and some issues that have been uh, raised as far as those sites go. But this is archaeology.org and I'll leave the link below. And this talks about Watson Break. And I'm going to try to go over as many of these ancient sites as possible. And if you have a site you want me to look into in the United States that uh, not many people know about, I would really appreciate a comment. I'm just trying to... Uh, catalog as many of these sites as possible but it says watson break in the floodplain in northern louisiana may be the oldest large-scale mound site in the americas it has been dated to 5400 years before the present making it 1900 years older than poverty point and that really shocked me because i was pretty surprised at how old poverty point was now watson break today is covered by trees this is what the mounds look like but we do have a few imaging uh, pictures taken and this is what it looks like without the trees just the ground looks like and you can see the mounds here this is a large oval that is about as long as a football field this is what the ancient site looked like right on the river of course but uh the age of this coming from the same time as the first dynasties of egypt that really surprised me now one thing that has been associated with these ancient sites is uh, giant skeletons and i'd like to talk about that plus the smithsonian doing some initial investigation of these sites and I'd like to go over that a little bit too but first of all I'd just like to read a speech from Abraham Lincoln or part of it and this was given at Niagara Falls in September of 1848 and it's very obvious Abraham Lincoln had a good handle on uh, ancient history and geology and just how things worked and he was a pretty smart guy and i'll leave the link for the speech below but he talks about the power of the river and the geology and it's a pretty fascinating speech but then at the end he says this but still there is more it calls up the indefinite past when columbus first sought this continent when christ suffered on the cross when moses led israel through the red sea nay even when adam first came from the hand of his maker then as now niagara was roaring here the eyes of that species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. So here is the President of the United States in 1848 talking about the extinct race of giants coming from the mounds of ancient America. So maybe, you know, Lincoln was exaggerating, maybe the reports of these uh, skeletons, which I have really looked into were they giants were they not giants why were they called giants but the fact is that most of these skeletons uh the biggest ones were right around seven feet maybe uh just a hair under or a hair over so these skeletons were as tall as the tallest humans today so to call them giants is uh exaggerating it's kind of uh glorifying it kind of uh you know making it sound a little more remarkable than it is. So I prefer the term uh, skeletons were found in these ancient sites that were comparable to the largest humans of today. I just think that is a lot better way of describing these people. And when reports of these skeletons come out and people see the word, uh, the word giant attached to it, immediately they you know, have some level of disbelief. So I think that is a wrong way to report these ancient uh, finds. But I think Abraham Lincoln's speech is very telling. And on this site here, this is sign of the times.net. And the title of this is the truth about giant skeletons in American Indian mounds and the Smithsonian cover up. And this was written, I guess, by a Dr. Greg Little. And it says during the past few years, a few years, a huge controversy has emerged accusing the Smithsonian and a host of skeptics, skeptics and archaeologists of covering up the discovery of hundreds of giant skeletons from Native American Indian mounds. And it talks about Jim Vieira and his work, and I think Jim Vieira does some excellent work. Um, I believe that there was reports of skeleton found in these mounds, but I believe they have been exaggerated, and the reports of the really giant ones are were reported but they were second and third hand stories and this article goes into the hoaxes and what you should kind of believe and not believe and i just think this is a very good article and i'm not going to go into it too much but i'm going to leave the link below because i know a lot of people are interested and it says this in this article 
In essence, for the Smithsonian to have found 17 skeletons that were 7 feet tall by chance alone, they would have to excavate 2.5 million skeletons you know, in order to come up with a statistical probability that there just happened to be large skeletons amongst the ones that were found. And it goes into, you know, uh, giantism, that disease, and just the odds of finding skeletons that were that tall, unless they weren't part of some race that was seven feet tall. I don't know if you understood that, but it says, the height of many of the individuals entombed in ancient American mounds was far taller than the general populace far beyond what could be explained by simple chance. So I think that's important. So um, I don't think there's any reason to disbelieve that there wasn't skeletons found. The Smithsonian seems to be reporting these finds and uh, they kind of, uh, kind of shut up as far as what they had found at a certain point in history, but there was some initial investigations, publications by the Smithsonian's saying that skeletons were found that were around seven feet tall. Now these were not giants, these are just as tall as the tallest humans today. And there's no reason to disbelieve that or have any uh, doubt about this. When a race, I believe in Indonesia somewhere of a, a smaller race of people were found, people said, you know, wow, cute, cool, that's really neat. And just because a little larger skeletons were found, I don't think people should shut off the disbelief meter just because some people associate giants with the Nephilim and evil and uh, stories that have been just totally gotten out of control as far as the Anunnaki and other ancient uh, giants or whatever one name you want to attach to it. But I just thought I would go over that. But one thing about investigating these sites is that most of these sites say the earliest, it seems that people migrated to these sites about 10,000 BC, and that coincides with the end of Atlantis. And one name that popped up when I was just reading about this was Edgar Cayce. And I had no idea, but um, Edgar Cayce is one story that I heard about, and I just said, oh my God, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. And I read about Edgar Cayce, and I was just blown away. Some things you just can't explain. Some people are just uh, endowed with extraordinary gifts, and Edgar Cayce is one of them, I believe. He made 68 different readings on the ancient mound builders of America, and I will leave the article for this below, and it gives uh, some, con uh, some confirming evidence to his readings, and about 77% of his readings are, have been proven to be accurate, and one thing that Edgar Cayce says is that a certain percentage of the people from Atlantis came to America and actually started the Iroquois tribe, and that is one tribe I've talked about as far as Serpent Mound and creation myths and Orion, so it would make sense that these people passed down some legends from Atlantis. And it says, Casey indicated that the largest migration from Atlantis occurred just before 10,000 BC. The majority of these Atlantean survivors went to the northeastern coastal areas of America and Canada, becoming the Iroquois. It should be recalled that Casey also stated that not all the Iroquois were Atlanteans. The Atlanteans migrated to the Americas and they merged with people already present in America by that time. The Atlanteans became leaders of the tribes and Casey's story makes it clear that the Atlanteans had serious disputes among themselves that were reflected in ongoing violent conflict. And uh, this is just a fascinating article and it goes over Edgar Casey's readings and uh, DNA research that has pretty much confirmed what Casey has said. But, uh, you know, I just find it incredibly interesting. I'll leave the link for this below. But once again, we have a mound site in Louisiana that dates from the earliest dynasties of Egypt. We have Abraham Lincoln talking about giant skeletons found in the mounds of America. And we have Edgar Cayce talking about Atlanteans coming to America in 10,000 BC and starting the Iroquois tribe. And many of these mound building sites, the investigations, they all mentioned 10,000 BC. So I found that uh, connection to be rather interesting. But giants, no, it wasn't giants. 
the true reports, the ones that pretty much are verified, these skeletons were about seven feet tall. Yes, they were t very tall. Giants, no, they were just as tall as the tallest people living today. So they were by no means giants. Hope you followed along. I'm losing my breath. Have a nice day.